All right, welcome back to our last minute tip series. This time I'm going to give you some last minute tips on A-level chemistry paper one. Now this exam is the physical and the inorganic paper. So I'm going to tell you some things based on that, whether or not you've got your exam in a few hours or you've still got a couple of days before it. So to begin with, as I've said, it's an inorganic and a physical paper. The inorganic part, you either get the marks or you don't. It's simply just memorizing things. And sometimes it's them asking you to just write out equations. There's literally questions where it's just one mark and you write out the full equation you cannot get those marks unless you've covered the content for them so what I want you to do right now is to look at all those inorganic chemistry things compile it all onto one piece of paper and rewrite that same stuff again and again and again what I did for my exam is I created a document where I basically blanked out all the different equations for the inorganic side and literally minutes before the exam all I was doing was rewriting those same equations again and again and again because all it is is just memorizing you really want to make sure that they're shoved into your short-term memory right before that exam just so when you do go into the exam and you find a question on it at least you quickly put it into your head and now you're able to get the mark for it because I would say these marks are the easiest to get in the paper but they're also the hardest to get because it's simply you either know them or you don't so you either are going to go into the exam and get those inorganic questions correct which is what you want which is why I want you to go over them or you're just gonna get them wrong because you haven't gone over them you haven't memorized the equations you haven't memorized the common marking points that they usually like to ask within inorganic but I just want to say inorganic is not usually a huge portion of the paper and if you're someone who right now is like really lost and you've got lots to go over and you don't know where to begin I don't want you to spend all your time on inorganic because it doesn't account to a huge portion of the paper and also the thing about it is that let's say you go over an entire topic you're only really going to be asked one maybe two maybe three max equations from that list and so for that reason you're going to be spending a lot more time learning things that you're more likely not even going to be tested on within the exam so if you're someone right now who has time and you know that you're behind in every single one of the topics and you don't know what to prioritize i would say focus on the physical the physical is more mark heavy but if you're someone who needs some stuff to look over right before the exam inorganic is better to do so because it's easy to go over and it's also going to guarantee you a couple marks uh, even though physical is a bit different you not only need to go over it you have to do lots and lots of question practice to make sure that you are understand the way they ask the questions especially for the long really difficult maths questions that they usually chuck in at the very end so there's one really common maths question that comes up all the time and it's a back titrations question now I used to struggle with back titrations all the time my teachers never explained them to me properly and whenever I try and do it the method that they taught me it just wouldn't work and I'd always get it wrong or sometimes I'd understand one question but as soon as I go to another one I don't know where to begin again and there's just like there's so many marks in these questions that you really you don't want to miss out so if you don't understand back titrations I'm gonna link a video that I watched that helped me so much visualize how back titrations work because I can't lie there's no set method to doing back titrations you're gonna to have to use a bit of your common sense and you're gonna to have to really problem solve when you do these type of questions because they're gonna give you some information and they're not gonna give you the rest and what you have to do is work backwards from the information that you know all the way back to the very beginning which is what they're asking you and if you're able to understand the process and understand why they're doing it, which is what the video helps with then trust me the whole topic of back titrations and just that quantitative chemistry it makes a lot more sense and after I did a couple questions for practice every time I did that type of question I would get right full marks and so that's what I want you guys to do as well I want you to get all marks in that question and it's not hard as long as you understand the logic behind that type of question and understand how to do them let's say you do go into your exam okay and you've just forgotten everything and you get given like a really big mark maths question all you're trying to do now is gain as many marks as possible so just find the moles of everything that you can any equations that you can remember just put them in write them down even if you don't use them write them down tell them that you know that this equation exists find moles of everything do some calculations just do something because you're more likely to get a couple marks here and there if you do so but this is like worst case scenario if you're just trying to pick up a couple marks do that try and find out everything that you do know and maybe if you do that you start figuring out what you're doing and you might end up actually getting to the right answer and also I want to just tell you to make sure you don't round these numbers when you're doing the calculations and stuff because if you round anything and you end up with an answer that's slightly off you're gonna get it wrong and sometimes what can happen is because you started the rounding from very early on and you've skewed all your answers you're gonna get carried on marks but you might get less than you might have thought because you basically ruined the rest of the working out now obviously I don't want this to happen to you that's why I want you to make sure that you don't round anything and you keep everything in its full form so when you do get the answer at the end it is exactly the answer they're looking
looking for. And another thing I want to talk about as well in terms of rounding, when the question gives you a table or something, a really common question type is like they give you a titration table and they want you to find the titers or the average and whatever, right? If they give it in three significant figures, your answer should be in three significant figures. If the question's got two significant figures in the uh, data, then your answer should be in two significant figures. 99% of the time it's three significant figures, but just make that clear, you will lose a mark if you don't do the correct significant figures. If you are lost, three significant figures should be fine. I just want to make that clear because I have seen that in some questions sometimes where they're a bit weird with the whole significant figures thing. Another thing that I want to mention is that you know that the paper three is the practical based paper. That's the one where you're going to be asked mostly about your practical techniques and stuff like that. That does not mean that you're not going to get practical questions in this paper. Please go over the practicals that are within paper one and within the topics that you're covering within this paper because they can still come up just fine. Let's say you do get a six mark question on a practical which can very likely happen. What I recommend for you to do is bullet point everything out so that way it's really clear to you whether or not you've hit six points or not and also I want you to at the very bottom put all the control variables just because every single mark scheme always has that as a marking point. So once you've written your full method if, if it's asking you for a method then at the bottom just literally write controlled variables or whatever and just put as many as you can. That will always give you a mark. It's a guaranteed mark. And what I want to also say is that this is chemistry. There's so many definitions that you need to know. There's so many really, really common questions that usually come up. So if you're lost in what to do right now and you have like a day before your exam, I want you to focus as much as you can on those past paper questions, those exam questions. You don't have to do full papers, but I want you to look over them and look at any correlations between questions, especially any questions that are simply like, what is this? And it asks you for the answer. Please just memorize that. Whatever it is, just memorize it and memorize the mark scheme for it. So a very common question, what is the average atomic mass? This is something that should be ingrained in your head. Another common definition is electronegativity. Because generally those mark schemes to do with like nuclear attraction and like shielding, they're all the same. Whenever you're comparing like ionization energies, for example, the marking points are the exact same every single time. And if you know them, you're gonna get all the marks. And if you don't know them, then tough, they're not gonna get the marks. So please go over those mark schemes. They repeat the most in chemistry out of all the sciences so you really want to spend as much of your time on those mark schemes but obviously if you don't know the content I want you to start off with looking over the specification making sure that you've learned everything and then move on to doing as many mark scheme questions as possible obviously you don't have all the time in the world right now that's why I want you to refrain from doing full past papers if you are looking at past papers which I do recommend for you to do look at the difficult questions just quickly skim over them look at anything that comes out at you you don't have to sit there and do every single question and just make sure that with every question you're checking with the mark scheme and you're memorizing the mark scheme schemes for the ones that I've mentioned. So in a nutshell, what I want you to do, let's say you have your exam literally an hour before you're watching this. I want you to sit there and do all those inorganic equations, quickly go over all of them, but make sure it's stuck in your head. But remember, this is lowest priority in the paper. Your highest priority should be the main physical section of the paper. So that's what I want you to do if you have more time on your hands. I want you to focus on that physical chemistry, look at all the different mark schemes for different questions, memorize any definitions. And last thing I want to say is good luck for this exam. Chemistry paper one out of the three papers, I would say personally is the easiest to get the highest score in. Obviously it's a really difficult paper but remember that the A-level chemistry grade boundaries are ridiculously high and if you're aiming for an A star, an A, anything high, if you're aiming for a good grade for chemistry which I'm hoping you are, you really really want to put everything into this first paper. Don't think oh okay it's fine I have two more papers left. This paper is usually the one that people who get an A star and A in usually do best in because this is the one that you really really have to get a good score in because everything within this paper is technically up for grabs you can basically get every single mark if you've revised everything whereas in like paper two and three even if you've revised everything they can still do weird stuff obviously they can do that in paper one as well but from my experience the stuff that they do in paper two and three is a little more difficult to be familiar with than it is in paper one paper one is very very repetitive and the question types repeat themselves all the time so if you've revised in depth and you've revised fully you shouldn't worry about this paper but make sure that you do practice enough for this paper because this is the one where you want to put everything into apart from that good luck for this exam See you in paper two probably, so yeah, bye for now.